Okay, so today we are continuing our series on fig wine. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne. And Lori. And this is Healthy Farm Living. So we're here, we're actually continuing a series on how we make wine, homemade wine. So we have our fig wine here, and the last time we were together, we actually showed you how we got to essentially this point. And that was right at about two weeks ago. Now you can see just by how much these have cleared up, if you look at that old video, we're really getting a tremendous amount of clarity and a lot of sediment or lees. So now this is mainly yeast. So a lot of just kind of nasties. <laughs> a lot of crust and it's kind of gross looking. It is. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuff still floating around in here. So it's not completely clear and <laughs> it probably hasn't completely finished fermenting yet. However, we need to take this time now to get this lees or sediment removed because we don't want it tainting the wine. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how we're going to remove the wine and leave behind this lees or sediment. A couple of things I probably need to clarify. The first would be we really choose when we are making our wine or starting our wine. We really try to do that either at the beginning of summer when it's warm in the house or here heading into fall. Today's October 3rd, 2020. The reason why is we want to have the house temperature nice and high. This process is called re-racking and you can do this as often as you need to. We prefer to use yeasts that finish very rapidly and completely and our goal is to really only have to re-rack one time. Now you can do this, as I said, as often as you need to. We're just keeping our fingers crossed that the next time we're here, all we're doing is the next step. So a few things that you're going to need for today. Obviously, you already know we're going to need airlocks because we're going to have wine that's getting close to finished. We are going to be testing the wine today, so you're going to see that we have a beaker here or some other type of vessel and a hydrometer. We're going to see what our specific gravity reading is today so we know whether or not the fermentation is complete. I have a racking cane and a siphon. This is an auto siphon, a racking cane is inside of it, and then of course some tubing because we're gonna be moving the wine from these vessels into another vessel. Now, it might not be easy to pick up on camera, but you can see the heavy sediment layer that we have here in this one gallon jug, and we have the exact same thing that's happening with this six gallon jug. So we do know that we're gonna to try to get the majority of just the clear wine out of here and leave behind as much of the sediment as we can. Now with this particular re-racking, it's going to sit for probably a couple months. So we really don't need to be too concerned about getting everything out of here because we can either re-rack or if there's not much left, we'll just finish the wine by the time we're done. However, our next step is gonna be getting the wine out of these containers and into the new vessel. The goal with this is to create a siphon that goes from this container, and it's the reason why this container is down here on the ground. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be use, utilizing an auto siphon, that's what this is here, a racking cane, which is this piece here, and then this tubing. Now you can just get a racking cane and attach the tube and create suction any way you want, but we found that the auto siphon is really the best way to go. So what you're gonna see Lori and I do is you're gonna see us transferring the material from here with the auto siphon. Lori's gonna keep an eye on this to make sure I don't overflow my container. And we have a backup bucket just in case this is a little bit too much wine for this container. So let's go ahead and get to racking.
We have everything racked off of the leaves here and into another container. And it filled up this five gallon fermenter perfectly. So now if Lori slides in, you'll see a couple things. Number one, there's a tremendous amount of leaves. We found this with the fig wines. They have a tendency to give just a whole lot of sediment. And a lot of that is yeast. This is a pretty high alcohol content wine. So there's a lot of yeast in there that was created. So we have that there and you can just see how nasty that looks and just how clear this one looks. Now, if Lori gets in, hopefully you can pick this up on camera. There's a lot of seeds in here. So that's one thing about figs. They have these tiny, tiny seeds. So as we go through the process of re-racking, we'll re-rack this at least once before we see you guys again and continue the process. And we'll actually go ahead and filter this out. Now, whether that's gonna be cheesecloth or something else, you can just put that at the end of the tubing and it'll capture all of this as the wine pours out. So at some point in time, we are gonna to need to get rid of those. A lot of those will come out as they sink, but some of them do float, so they won't come out completely. Okay, so now we do have the one gallon jar that we need to go ahead and re-rack. Once we're done with that, we'll come back to you. We have these re-racked. You can see just how clear this smaller container is. Now this container is holding what we'll be using to top this off as we re-rack this. You'll notice this is much clearer and that's because there's just not as much wine in here to ferment and finish. My guess is the specific gravity is probably a little lower on this one. Either way, this one's pretty much done. There's a little bit of sediment at the bottom, but again, we're just using this to top this one off. So what I really want is I want to get the specific gravity off of this. I can already tell by looking at it, it probably is still fermenting just a little bit. We're going to find out here in just a moment. And how we're going to do that is we're going to be utilizing a hydrometer to get a reading as far as specific gravity, and I will be using a wine thief. Now, a lot of these supplies we have in our Amazon shop, in the winemaking section, and I'm pretty sure this is in there as well. I do like these larger plastic ones for dipping down into the large fermenting containers. We do have a small glass one as well that's very good for finished wine and using that to taste it. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and use the Wine Thief to get enough fluid out of here so I can get a reading in this beaker. Looks like we are at 0.996. So again, not quite completely finished. I believe the last time we did a fig wine, we were at, we finished at 0.994. So 0.990 is pretty much no sugar left. So this has just a little bit of sugar, so it has a little bit of ways to go still. So it's probably still a little bit of fermentation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get this wine back into here so we can get these wines placed where we store them here for the next couple of months. So really excited to see how this is gonna turn out. I think if you're gonna be trying this on your own, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised just how amazing this wine is. You can already see the color starting to take shape. Just that beautiful golden honey, almost a whiskey or a brandy color. It's already really starting to take shape there. Got a few seeds we need to get out of this guy here as we go through the re-racking process here over the next couple months. Now, timing. A lot of this, again, will change based on how warm it is inside the area where you're doing your fermentations. For us, we're gonna start cooling off drastically here over the next month or so. Now, these, this wine is almost completely finished, so I'm not too concerned about the fermentation stopping, but it could slow. So the idea here is to just to get this wine as clear as possible before we take the next step. Of course, the next step is the next time around. So we just wanna thank you for joining us here today. We do enjoy winemaking, but this isn't the only thing that we're gonna be covering here. Here we talk a lot about healthy living. For us, this is a part of that. It's also a way for us to utilize what comes off of our farm. Speaking of which, our primary channel is Edge of Nowhere Farm. That's where you'll find us usually and we cover all the things that we do outside to make the figs that make this wine. So we'd love to find you there. Instagram and Facebook, we do post content there that you won't see here on the YouTube channel. Our Amazon shop, I mentioned that. If you start with that link, I'll leave it down below. That's our Amazon affiliate. If you click on that link, it doesn't matter what you buy. You actually help to support the channel here. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to see those. We would love to answer any of those for you as best we can. Leave those in the comment section down below. So we just want to thank you for joining us here today and remind you to be farm healthy. So, Lori, what do you think? 
<laughs> You're starstruck. The wine's amazing. You're stumped. <laughs> so, the fig wine, what do you think? <laughs> so, the fig wine, what do you think? <laughs> That's okay. Come on in here asking me the question, beautiful. We'll flip the script. <laughs> so, the fig wine, what do you think? Or you can say, so what do you think about the fig wine? <laughs> well, fig wine, how's it looking? Fig wine, bam! <laughs> Be farm healthy. You got through it.